Hi guys, Joseph here. Today we're doing another Joseph car video and today we're doing another video on my 2002 Volvo V70 and today I'll be showing you how to replace rear shocks. So let's get down to the car right now. Right guys, so we're down to the car now guys and here's a shock absorber. Comes in a nice box like this. I actually got this from a local parts store. Yep. Yeah. Open the box, so here we go. And this is what you get inside your box here, eh? which you, you, you would expect is a rear shock absorber. And it comes in shipping strap like this, so got to kind of pull in a bit, or pull in, get the shipping strap off, get the strap off, and let this off, this came from my local parts store, here you go, so before we get started guys, we do have to activate these shocks, so what you do guys, I'm just going to tilt you down a bit so you can see what we're doing, get, use a bottom bit to push on the ground guys, see at the bottom, I'll make sure you can you can see, so I'm going to pause here. Right guys, so first, you want to activate the gases. These are cool, these are gases inside this. You've got to activate them. So you push on the ground, and I'm going to do this about five times. And let it extend out. Let it extend. And you do it again, then you repeat. Then do it again. Now let it extend out. You're doing this to activate all the gases inside it. Because if you don't, you'll get a lot of residual banging if you don't do this. And also you'll get terrible performance. So, do it again. I'll do it three or five times, I'm going to do it five just for play it safe. You meant to do it three times, but I'm going to do it five just to play it safe here. There you go. Then you push again. Then after the five times, the thing is ready to be installed. This, these are gas shock absorbers, so there's gas inside, and you've got to activate the gases. So now it's ready to be installed. And also, it comes with a new washer and lock nut. That's what it comes with new shocker and lock nut. New washer, lock nut, which will be very useful for later on. So I'm going to pause and we're going to get started. Right, guys, so the first step is you want to get this tray out here, so to fix the trap. Kind of pull up and pull out. Here we go. Now that's out of the way of our shock absorber. I'm gonna put it aside for a minute. So now you leave this one in there, thanks to kneel on, and now you've got to pull this out. This sound damper, that sound material. Up. Now you got to get that out. Now you can already see the rear shock already. So I'm going to pause and go and mount you. So I'm going to drop the rear seat so I can give you more of an angle. Also, I'll take cargo cover out. It's pretty easy to do. Gives you more room if you pull this out. I'll get in the tug with your car. There you get yourself some more room. Here you go. You're kind of set up. I'm just going to go and drop my rear seats here. 
I'm also going to show you how to do it. It's easy to do. You kind of can see the lever in there. So you've got to open the rear door. Then you just grab the lever. And you just drop it. And you just pull the headrest down. It'll do for now. And you do the same on the other side. So I'm going to pause here and get that one down. Right to now. So right guys, under here is a little sound damper, so you've got to try and pull that, you've got to pull this out of the way, try and pull that off. No, just got, you've got to be careful because this is stuck down. I'll also try and stick it back down. I've got to pull that gently so you don't tear this. I'm not going to bend it at all. I'm just going to carefully do this. I'm being careful not to rip mine. It's stuck down with something, this is. You don't need that much glue. I'm just There you go, sand up right away. Now we'll have to find the size to fit in there. This could either be a T40 or a H5. And then you've got to get an 18mm spanner to hold that in. To undo that, you've got to get say, to hold the top of the shock absorber. Which a new one looks like it's an Allen. That one definitely looks like a Torx. That's the T40, or it could be H5. So I'm going to pause and go and, and get me torques and spanners. Right, now. right, guys, I've got me spanner on the shock absorber on, on top of the shock to undo it, and also trying to ratchet. It. And if this don't work, well, I might have to get a breaker on it. That's really, I'm going to get a breaker here. I might have to push pull you back, guys. I'm gonna move you back, guys. Here you go. Not much force at all. Not much force at all in here. When you get it really loose, you gotta do the rest by hand and there you go. Now now we're gonna have to get under the car to undo the bolt underneath. So now you, we're gonna jack the car up. So I'm gonna pause and go and jack it. And also, when doing shock absorbers, when doing these shocks, never just replace one side, guys. You've got to do this one in pairs. Also. Before I actually got a car once where I had a new shock absorber on the driver's side and an old one on the passenger side. So I had to throw both of them away and put two new ones in because your car will ride very uneven if you just put one on one side and not do the other. So do this one in pairs. So 
on from the poles and also undo the other side, the other nut on the other side, then jack the car up. So I'm gonna pause here. So right guys, gizzy bit. So you wanna get a wire brush here and you wanna scrape it with a wire brush. Did the best with that and let's spray it down. I've got some of that. That'll make it come off easy. That's gonna. So now I've got to get yourself. So right guys, when you get your breaker bar in there, break it loose. You've got to kind of work like you're behind a clock here. So Take some muscle. Here we go, we're getting it now. Here we go. We're getting somewhere now. There we go. I will edit some of the boring bits out, guys. So you don't have to watch all boring parts. Right, guys, I've broken it loose. Now transfer to a ratchet once you've got it loose. Right guys, I'll take the jack out, try and take some tension, see if I'll drop the tension that way. It's actually taking some tension off. Yeah, I'm going to pause until I have actually loosened this up because it's going to take me a while so I'm going to pause here. Now guys, it's really loose now. I think I can do this by hand there. No, not quite. Oh, I can. Now, shock absorber shock. You want a long screwdriver to pry this thing out. Wait, that's come out easy, that was. Oops. <laughs> I don't want to do now. Got it out. That's that out. Now, it's the question is how do I get this out? Maybe if I take the wheel off, I might get some room. Looks like the wheel might have to come off, so I'm going to pause here. I'm going to get a socket to take the wheel off, so I'm going to pause here. Right guys, so first time to take the wheel off, you've got to break these nuts loose with a breaker bar. You don't really need to have the wheel on the ground because Tizzy, handbrake's holding the wheel, so we're going to get a breaker bar and then break this loose. So I'm going to pause here. Right guys, I'm breaking these nuts loose, do it in a crisscross pattern. Because of my handbrake's on, I don't need to have the wheel car on the ground here. Here you go. These are on tight. I'm actually using my, I'm using some of my muscle. Then do the nut opposite. This one don't think I want to come off. That one's on there, soup. Yeah. 
These are on there tight. <laughs> no, I'm gonna tell you. These ones are on tight. Now guys, I'm going to go and get my quick wheel spinner and get that wheel off, so I'm going to pause her. Right guys, get the remaining off. Not had the rears off as much as I've had the front. So let's get this one undone. Just, you, you don't have to do this in a crisscross by the way. Here you go. Let's say you undo the wheels. Normally I'd do it off the ground, but I just I really weren't planning to take these off really. It looked like I had to. It's because I don't have a lot of ground clearance. If you have a lift, you wouldn't have to do this step if you actually had a car lift. Yeah, if you have a lift, use it for this job. Me and most people don't have a lift. Yeah. So say you do it without a lift. The reason I'm taking this off so I can get this shock absorber should fall out and I'll take this wheel off. This wheel's actually frozen on there. Ah, there you go. Come off really not too hard. That one was actually kind of frozen on there. That one. Normally the wheel would just come right off. This tight didn't. I'm just gonna throw the wheel aside. Now the shock absorber should come right out. Still, no clear. I don't know what I'm going to do now. Don't know step here. That looks a bit cheap. Maybe in that sort of thing. Right guys, we got it out finally. It was very emission to get out. So yeah guys, I got it out. It was a real difficult thing to get out. I kind of got it out in this sort of angle and I jacked the thing up more. So there you go, got the other one out. This is definitely what's wrong. It, 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 you need some strength. It's not very good on return. It was this car was fish tailing at the back, so I know it's not leaking, guys, but it was fish tailing. This car was, and that's the reason I'm replacing this. So I'm gonna pause and go and grab the new one and then start fitting it all back. So I'm gonna pause here, right, guys. Before you put new and old parts on, you really want to compare these parts, make sure they're all the same height, which they are. I'll just show you guys. Which they are the same. They look the same. They're all the same parts. This new one's in a lot better quality than the old one though. This one looks a bit cheap made. Plastic. Got a plastic top which I think is cheaply made. 
So let's put the new one in. Might try and can maybe if I can press it. Might be a good in compress. There we go. If I can press it. There we go. Compress it a bit, now it's in. kind of goes up at an angle. Get the same sit back on its jacks there. Okay. It's through now. That's what you do, you've got to try and line it up your truck absorber. Now we've done it. And now we're going to tighten it up just to. And then we will torque this. Cause this is... You can actually see the new, the new thing there. It, it's definitely not black like the original one, but who's bothered what colour it is? It's, it's, it's in the. You can't see it inside the car. Doesn't really matter. It don't bother me what colour it is. Because when you're in the car, you won't see it. Unless if you took all the floor out and the boot, you'd see it then. It's definitely a stiffer ride. I can feel this one is stiffer than the other one. So it's going to be a bit... Just so you know, guys, at the start, it will be stiff in the rear. It will be stiff. It'll be a bit of a stiff ride. But you'll get better performance, though. In case you don't know what I'm doing. Guys, I'm just going to let you know I'm actually just tightening the bolt up. I want to drop you under the car so you can see. I'm going to pause here. Here you go, guys. Also, I'll pinch up the breaker bar. Then don't just tighten them. You want to torque it to spec as well. Which I'm going to do. Considering it's suspension, I will torque this. Because... Here's why you have to torque your suspension parts. If you don't torque it, it might not be worked bottomed out properly. It's more important. It's important for top and bottom because it could make, it could cause damage over time. It could make a hole in this the mount to the bottom. That would not be good. Also, if it, if... that is good enough at the minute. That's on there super tight. And I'm gonna pause now, I'm gonna go and get my torque wrench, guys. Sorry if you couldn't see, guys. I'm doing this as quick. There you go. There's the bolt that we tightened up, guys. Sorry you didn't see it, but that's the... That's what you tightened up, guys. There you go, I'm gonna pause there. Right, guys, get your 17mm socket and torque it to 60 foot pounds. That's your 59, but I'm just going to torque it to 60. Also, 
I'm gonna have to pause here. I've realised I need an extension, so I'm gonna pause here. Right, guys, I've got a half inch extension. That's talked. I'm virtually done it all myself. Talked this surprisingly. That's talked. Excuse me. That's talked. That's definitely talked. So now, guys, it's time to get the wheel back on. And, but first, I've got to do the other side, remember? So, also, it's the same design on the other side. So yeah, I'm going to pause and go and do the other side. Then we're getting on the interior after we've done the other side. So I'm going to pause here. Right, guys. I've just got a vehicle dropped and the and the, well, we'll talk the wheels in a minute. So you want to get the washer the, and the lock nut now. Drop the lock nut on. If you bounce car, you might hear it make move a bit. As you can see, that'll be all right once I've put it all in. Let's start it off. And now, this one's a 17 millimeter instead of an 18. So, instead of this being a Torx, this is a H5. Here's what you can do. Here's a trick, guys. Have you actually set to loosen? Because this works the opposite way, guys. It might be a bit stuck at the end, I want to show you what to do. Nearly bottoming out. I do some. Sometimes it might get stuck. If you do, if, it, if your torques on that get stuck, you want to bang it with a ratchet to come out. Then, right, guys. I tried to talk this, but it's not talking. Guys, I tried to get a torque wrench on that, but instead the centre was spinning. I really tried my best to talk this, but it, it really won't talk. But what I've done, guys, instead, I've got it as tight as I can. That one, I've got it really as tight as I can. That's what I did. Because it wouldn't talk, I don't think that would go anywhere, guys. Because if you don't tighten them enough, it can be really bad. But I think I've kind of over-tightened it, but that's better than under-tightening, really. Especially with suspension. I've ended up guessing I had to do it by feel because it's kind of getting dark and I don't really have much time to mess around. I did my best. I did my best to get this taut suspect, but I was unable to. Yeah, I know that's meant to be taut to 60 foot pounds. That's what it's meant to be taut to. That's what it's meant to be taut to, but I couldn't get it at all. So 
I'm going to pause and we start getting the interior back together. So I'm going to pause here. So first bit is we've got to get the sound damper in. I'm not going to worry about gluing this anyway. I'm just going to put it back. I'm trying to get this in proper. And also guys, when you do do these in pairs, I've also I've done that side so that sound damper can go back on. Same design on this side. I'm not gonna bore you and show you both sides. Right guys, I'm just gonna go and get the sound damper to put back in. Insulation, insulation guys, I'm gonna go and grab it. Right guys, I've got the required insulation that needs to just be put back in and before we can put everything back. We must put this in proper. Now I'm just going to go and grab the floor guys Just got the floor to put back in I'm going to throw me other tripod out of the way for a minute Drop it in the side Now guys, let's get our floor back in. Before doing this job, you should empty your luggage out, by the way, which I already did. That's in. Ah, it's not in one side. I'm actually going to put the rear seats up to get this in easier. Lifting the rear seats up. That actually might come in easier, guys. Here we go. <laughs> now we. See. Now, obviously, we're going to get the final bit in and see cargo cover. Here it is, the final cargo cover goes in last. First to come out, obviously, should, would, could have been the first to come out. You kind of just sit on the floor here. In. Now you just pull your cargo cover across. There you go. Now, obviously, the final bit you do is close the boat. Here you go. So, now finally, we've got to go and talk the wheels up. So, I'm going to pause and I'll talk them to 103 foot pounds. I'm going to pause. Right guys, got a torque wrench and I'll torque it to 103 foot pound. Oh, that's loosened. Do this in a crisscross pattern, so when you do that one, go do the nut opposite.
And also, just do it again, just to make sure. I'm gonna pause and also go and talk off the other side so I'm gonna pause right guys got the rear wheels torqued but since that I've got all the rear wheels torqued to 103 foot pounds I have been using the car for the past few days and it's been pretty good I've been using it for the past few days it's been going fine no problems got awesome handling guys see so right guys it's been really good so we're gonna go on a test drive so I'm going to pause and we're going on a test drive right now. Right guys, we're on the test drive. Yeah, we're already going guys. See, seems all right at the minute guys. The, the old, the old rear shocks seem all right guys. I'm just going to show you how they are guys. So let's get going guys. I would recommend these shocks guys, they seem good guys. Yeah. I'd hundred percent recommend these. These shocks are made by a company called Melee guys, that's what they're made by. Yeah. See I've got them from a part store. No, I don't think so. <laughs> 
I don't think it's a loose shot. <laughs> Might be saying you just did under the car. Yeah. Perhaps someone's hanging underneath. <laughs> I, don't, a ride. I don't think that. <laughs> no one would fit under this car anyway. <laughs> no one would fit under here. <laughs> oh yeah. So, so low to the ground, no one would actually fit under it. <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> You probably just stick like the same flicked under the car, so you what it is. Well, like a shop or something. Nah, probably just something plastic flipped yeah. under it. That's probably all that it is. Yeah. I don't know if you heard that, guys. I don't know if you heard it. Definitely I did, though. first put new shocks on the car you will feel a bit of a hard ride we can feel at the rear it is stiff at the rear it don't take you very long to get used to it guys it don't take that long to get used to yeah with new shocks it does take a bit of getting used to it don't take that long guys like a little bit of driving you'll you'll soon be used to it really don't take long guys to be honest with you Some lorries come under this bridge and they don't read the height restrictions and they end up running into it. And that's why they've got a big metal beam up there to stop <laughs> running into the bridge. Yeah. God, the size of it. I suppose rather than running into the bridge, they just think that you know, if we smash their lorry up, they've got no chance of running under there and break our bridge. This is where it really tests your shock absorbers, is on these ramps. That's what really... Because if you, when you have worn out shocks, you'll get sprung up when you go over bumps. That's when you'll notice it, guys. And that's something you really notice with new shocks. You don't get sprung up. And you can actually go over bumps faster as well. You don't get that secondary spring. Yeah. So if you... Yeah, because if you have old shocks and they're bad, you get sprung up. The rear spring up and the front will go down. That's what will happen, guys. Yeah. 
I'm towing somebody's house tomorrow, will that wear him out? <laughs> yes. You can't tow a house anyway. <laughs> yeah. Don't be silly, you can't tow well, a house. I'm going to jack it up and put it on wheels and <laughs> tow it around the motorway. <laughs> this, this car will not pull it. A car, this car only weighs 2.4 tonnes. And a house is a lot heavier than that. the sun on that car in front. What's, what's that? Black box. Black box fitted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I don't think you will read the rest of it because no. it's, a, it's a bit rude, it's got a swear yeah. in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite funny. <laughs> Towns used to be like ghost towns. Yeah, there's a lot of people on the road now. Remember when all the roads are just quiet? Do you remember? Yeah, it's like a ghost town, wasn't it? That's yeah. what I call it a ghost town. It it's like everyone's just deleted all the cars. That's what it looked, looked, felt like. This just seems back to how it was before. There's not that many people around me normally. This is packed up here. You yeah. have to queue up and get to get on the road. Yeah. Our shocks seem pretty good. Yeah, they're, they're very, very good at the moment. You can do that on your time to tell. Yeah. They seem alright at the moment, but time to tell. There's a big queues in these supermarkets. I usually we usually just drive off. That's what I normally do. There's a queue here for what? Groceries. If there's, if there's a big queue in these supermarkets, we drive off, don't we? Oh, I can't be bothered. Yeah, if it's big ones, you just we just drive away. I just want to go home and have a sandwich, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Enough for a V70. Well, the well, aren't wide enough. Yeah. Right. So, right, guys, I'm wigging a pause now, guys, and going to end off this video. Right, guys, we're going to end off this video. I really hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any content like this, and also. So you get some behind the scenes footage, go follow me on Instagram and also you can go and follow me on Twitter as well. It's Joseph Cars and, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any content like this and give this video a like and have a nice day.